to the academy to teach, I accepted the offer. Me, nurturing young minds, sharing my passion with a whole new generation. I hope that means more Aruna calls in Fort Tarsus one day. It might mean more Matthias's. We're full up on Matthias's, actually. I'm going to miss our chats. Stay in touch. I'll try. Speaking of messages, have you told your mother? Not yet. I'm going to surprise her in Antium. I hope she smiles, maybe even laughs. I'd like to see her laugh. I'm glad you took the time to talk with me when you could have been, I don't know, sipping through the sky. If you ever fly over the academy, make sure you drop in to see me. I will. Throughout history, humanity have strived to create and innovate as times passed, either for the sake of the selves, others, or something much higher than us. Like a torch passed down from generation to generation, it has always been within our nature to explore the unknowns and create tools to make our lives easier, and for the many, there have always been those that have dedicated their lives to this. We call them entrepreneurs, researchers, and scientists, but in Anthem, we call them arcanists. Arcanists are a group of scientists, researchers, teachers, scholars, etc., who study the current world we inhabit from simple studying of the wildlife to dangerous and active agent relics of the past, to even exploring the unknown, depending on which field they like to study in. They are a large and vast group of people dating back to the pre darkened age of Helenotarsis and the Urgoth, which is around 500 years ago, and have made it their moral duty to examine, protect, and reserve every bit of information they find in the world. For humanity, while also leading to a new innovation for others to look into, understand, and pass on to the next generation to follow. Think of them as librarians of the modern world, or Indiana Jones for the many, but less violent and always places themselves in danger. They are easy to notice out in the world, with their clothing being long and plain colours, nothing too bright to make them too obvious. Their arms, something being visible from the shoulder downwards while sporting some sort of scarf or hood, usually matching with the same dull colours they wear. They sometimes wear masks out in the wild or in the fort, but no one knows what the purposes of these masks are. In fact, many of the locals seem to wear these masks as everyday necessities, but they don't seem to offer any unique function to the user, except style. While outside the fort, they tend to stay near encampments of study while having sentinels or other javelin users nearby to aid them in their research. I've noticed they don't wear any sort of exosuit or armour, and don't use any weapons to protect themselves while in the wild. This might be because they rely more on the fort's defence to protect them and do all their hard work while the Arcanists go about their day, or it could also be the fact that they are not properly trained in self-defence because of how fragile they are. This of course isn't all true. As we have seen, Mafia Summer, a known Arcanist, used a javelin to travel around, although unsuccessfully in that one mission, and also create traps for the Scars with successful effects. So perhaps it's only limited down to those that don't want to think on their feet and be more useful outside of their own skills. Now currently we do know quite a few Arcanists in game, some of them with their unique quirks, some of them just as your everyday Arcanists. We have Mafia Summer, who we work closely with within our story and also aid in his research. We have Rabban Mao, a brilliant Arcanist of the time who was on the verge of discovering something great, but suffered a terrible unknown fate which is left for us to discover. This is something I will come back to in the near future and create a video about what actually happened to him. And then we have Aruna, a well versed arcanist with very close links to Mafia Summer and his research. We do also have legends such as Idris the Old who was the mentor for Arden Vasa and the one to originally teach Arden how to use Ember. And we also have Heren. I believe I said that correctly, who was the one to originally find the gateway to the Anthem, which is a big feat of his own. Now we do also have Arden Vasa, who was the first person known to utilise Ember manipulation to our own usage, although it was actually Idris, his mentor, and then create the very first javelins for us to counter the Urkov against. Problem is, we don't have a 100% confirmation that he is part of the Arcanist group, or whether he was just an engineer, or whether he was something completely different at the time. As is not made clear within the quartet that he is. In fact, it does a very good job to keeping it mistress to us, even though through reading the Arkham's Ruins Cortex, it explains that Ardham and his mentor did at the time help out with creating the javelins and helping ways to counter back the Urgoth, but it doesn't outright tell us what the title were at the time. Studying something like Ember, which is a unknown resource to us, fits the bill for our Arcanists since they love to explore and know more about how things work. 
but at the same time he also created the Javelin of Dawn, which is still considered one of the most advanced pieces of tech to date for humanity, and that seems to fit the bill more for the engineers. Although nothing is stopping us from saying he could have been both, since it's known that Arcanists are the ones who designed the blueprints for Javelins. From the Arden Vassal Cortex, it's argued that it's near unbelievable that one person created the very first Javelin, fully understood the power of the Embers, create the walls of the fort and the gardens of the academy. In fact, it's believed that Arden Vassal wasn't even a person, but rather a group of Arcanists and engineers that came together and worked on one common goal, which to be honest sounds like a reasonable approach. Yeah, it's quite confusing and not quite clear for us, so I'm going to stick with this theory that Arden Vassal was an extremely unique and gifted Arcanist of the time, until it's made clear for us in the near future, hopefully. Now onto the topic of research, because of how rich our past history has been, and the many shapes and structures left behind by ancient races that have monumental value to them, the Arcanists have made it their duty to study them and explore our past history, which is something we already know of. But did you know, there used to be a library in Bastion called the Sanctuary of Dunar, that around the year 150 LV was known area for Arcanists all over to come and discuss their findings, while also being a key pinnacle area for storing history and records of our past. This was a well known academy that you can still visit, but not as it was, as many years ago in the late 297 LV, a young arcanist brought in a shape of relic that became active, which led to the destruction of the library and everyone there, and all saved records. As of the event, it was made clear that such things should never happen again until proper precautions were put in place. So from now on, arcanists have published a common book of accumulated learning known as the Concordance. It stands as the most prolific bits of work, and a new edition is published annually. Although these events have made us lose a valuable source of information, I don't believe the destruction of Duranar was the first or last time such events has occurred to us, since the world is always changing and adapting to how the Alpha wants it to be. Personally, I believe Antium would probably have a dedicated library of their own, with relics and such that can only be accessed by prolific arcanists. Being an arcanist seems all fun and great for those that like to learn and explore, but in the world of Bastion, at its centre, the Arcanist movement is all about truth and discovery. Often, truth does not serve those who hold sway of society, or those elements that sort of control. The truth then becomes an inconvenience at best, a threat at worst. And when you look closely at it, some truths are better hidden to the public, as Arcanists have often hid the truth and developed many ways to obscure their discoveries from prying and sometimes undeserving eyes. This of course is a dig towards the Dominion, who we know so well, and what their goals have been, but I wouldn't be surprised if this was a dig at generally everyone outside the Arcanist group as well. As knowledge is power, and from seeing what the Alpha can do, many people with different goals and agenda can use this knowledge for their own, both good and bad. Like when the atom bomb was first created, it provided us with tons of information to where we could use this power for other applications. But with the way it was used, it left a grim mark on humanity as to how much power one can use. The Arcanists really are a special group that I hope to see more exploration for the faction as a whole in the near future, which I know will be expanded since they love exploring the unknown, even when the unknown will potentially kill them. So I'm going to end the video here for another day. If you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and share the video with others who are interested in the worldly lore of Anthem. But once again, thanks for tuning by and I'll see you in the next one.